Hey guys, what's going on? It's Majin Bay. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so recently I top aided a battle hardened in Denver with the Icelander list that you guys uh, see before you. So I wanted to go over some of my choices, talk about what really worked for me, probably didn't, as well as the general strategy with the deck. Uh, so on the left, what you're going to see is basically this is the main deck. Um, some of the cards come out sometimes, but for the most part, you're not ever going to cut any of these cards. On the left are a little bit more situational stuff. A lot of things we bring in in specific matchups. Some of them come in in a lot of the matchups, but they're still not like quite key enough that I would say they're part of the main deck. Um, so let's talk about Icelander herself for a second. So Icelander starts with a little less health than other heroes. 36, uh, detriment of being a wizard, I suppose. A little bit frail. Uh, but you get the ability to play on your opponent's turn. Icelander allows you to, at instant speed, let me see if, yep, at instant speed, uh, you may play blue non-attack action cards from your arsenal as though they were an instant. Whenever you play an ice card during an opponent's turn, create a frostbite under their control. Now, the big one to like show what we do with this is something, um, is actually our weapon, Waning Moon. It's once per turn instant, two mana, deal two arcane damage to target hero. If it's not your turn, instead deal three arcane damage. You can only activate this ability if you played a non-attack action card this turn. So, what we try to do is arsenal of blue, play it on our opponent's turn, and then also Waning Moon to deal arcane damage. Um, usually, if it's an ice card, we also get a frostbite. This is really nice. This is where, or this is why, we run three copies of Cold Snap and three copies of Polar Blast, because what they let us do here and uh, here is they say if Cold Snap is played from Arsenal, draw a card, right? So for one mana, I get to pitch a blue, draw a card, give my opponent a frostbite, and most importantly, activate Waning Moon. So it's event, event it's basically free, <laughs> right? It's free because we're cycling it. Um, frostbite your opponent. Sometimes you get an additional effect, right? Like sometimes you could freeze their Arsenal or freeze an ally, then get your three arcane damage. Just very, very nice to keep up tempo because what we want to be able to do is we want to go to our turn with three cards in hand because we want to use one card to pitch, use one card to play, and one card to arsenal. That's the dream. Sometimes we're left with only two and we use the mana to Cornet's Peak our opponent and arsenal. Sometimes we're left with only one and we just go straight to arsenal. But what this version does, these like this muscle mage version that Michael Hamilton came up with, is um, it plays Enlightened Strike, Fendel's Fighting Spirit, and Wounded Bull. It also plays Scar for Scar. We'll get there in a second. But what's really important about this is that these are extremely above rate attacks, right? Enlightened Strike is basically three for seven um, because you can tuck any card and most of our cards are blue. So it's basically three for seven. You can use some go against shenanigans. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is block a bunch, keep Enlightened Strike and one card that doesn't block very well, maybe an amulet device or something. Enlightened Strike, pick, draw a card put the non-blocking card on the bottom, attack for five, and then arsenal whatever I get, right? It lets me keep my waning moon stuff going. Maybe I arsenal a red attack. Well, that's okay, because like it's just going to be a bunch of damage next turn. I'll just block a little bit different. Um, really, really like Enlightened Strike. Fendel's Fighting Spirit and Wounded Bull, again, are just above rate. You're getting eight points for three mana, which is about as good as it ever gets. I don't think anything gets a better rate than that. Um, Fendel's Fighting Spirit attacks for seven, and since you start off behind in life, you often will get the extra effect. Same with Wounded Bull. Um, this is like her liability is that she's frail, but your opponent has to kill you pretty quickly. And so they're going to be putting on a bunch of damage. And so you get to take advantage of these I am below life effects, right? Of Fendel's Fighting Spirit giving you the one life and Wounded Bull, which just gains you one extra attack. We can basically talk about these both at the same time. They don't block very well, but they attack for so much. And it's so important to have these because what it does is it allows you to keep your life and your opponent's life relatively similar all the way down right you start at 36 they start at 40. if you could keep it within that five points all the way down you're very 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 favored to win the game because what you get to do is cheat <laughs> you have access to instant speed effects you don't get to just take your turn you get to take their turn as well uh with a little bit with waning moon right but more importantly storm striders Waning Moon plus Storm Striders plus Blue Card and Arsenal can equal a lot of damage. You can do upwards of 10 damage really, really, really easily, right? With something like um, Aether Hail plus Waning Moon plus Aether Ice Vein, you're looking at a ton of damage. It's just like super, super insane the amount of damage you can put out at instant speed. So your opponent really needs to stay at like probably 8 plus at least to be like anywhere in the realm of safe when they present lethal and if they overreach themselves right if they have to use their whole hand to present lethal well then you just get to fire it off really quick so what we're trying to do 
is not control the game. We're trying to tempo it a bit. We don't need to completely shut our opponents down. What we need to do is slow them down enough while putting enough damage in their face that when we are threatened to die, uh, we get to just go off and kill them instead. And that's what these attacks really, really do. That's like, that's the difference between the Wounded Bull Icelander, Michael Hamilton version, and the full arcane versions you saw in the past. Those are a little bit more combo oriented or a little bit more control oriented. This is a tempo deck, right? Um, to accomplish some of that tempo, we have the normal like Aether Ice Veins, right? Incredible card. Incredible card with Insidious Chill. You get to just like strip your opponent's hand, put some damage in their face, and then Arsenal the Ice card. Um, one thing that I want to talk about is you need to plan your Ice Fuse very carefully because if you put the wrong card in your Arsenal, you can just lose the game. Uh, and for that reason, people I think are going to not agree with this. Frost Tex is in the sideboard. Uh, Frost Hex is out of the deck very, very often for me because I never actually want to have to cast it. Frost Hex is the worst rate card we have in the entire deck, even against like Guardians. Um, everything has to be aggressive against you now because you have access to Frost Hex and things like that. And these just above rate attacks and spells at instant speed, they have to put damage in your face. And so you don't have time to set up this Frost Hex combo, right? So even when I'm getting like two Frost Texas against Old Him, I'm maxing out at four or five damage over the course of the game through two Frost Texas. That's six mana and two cards, right? Like I would have gotten just a much, much, much better rate if I had just put Ice Bolt or Aether Hail in my arsenal instead. I would have done a ton more damage. So be very careful what you're fusing because what you're fusing, you usually have to put in your arsenal. Um, if you go, okay, I have Aether Ice Vein, Frost Tex, and then, right, like, polar blast and you pitch polar blast cast red aether ice vein fuse frost hex well now that frost hex goes in your arsenal and now against your phi opponent or whatever you have to find the spot to cast a three mana do nothing aura it's three mana give your opponent a frostbite maybe it does a damage or two right it's just horrible 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 in a lot of matchups so be very 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 careful what you want to arsenal Usually, the de facto, like, best arsenals are Cold Snap and Polar Blast, respectively, Cold Snap then Polar Blast, um, because it's just so efficient. You get the free three damage, like we talked about earlier. Aether Hail is another super fantastic one, because it's deal two, Frostbite, then another three. Um, another one is, like, Channel Lake Frigid against the aggressive decks, especially something like Briar, right? Because if Briar hits you, gets an embodiment of ice embodiment of earth token and then they go to their turn embodiment of earth pops and you go hold on i have a response you respond with channel like frigid it also gives them a frostbite insane turn you can use the extra mana to use your gauntlets to block with or if you have tunic at three uh which i advise putting a two mana card in your arsenal when you have your tunic at three ice bolt channel like frigid emeritus scolding uh you get to waning moon as well which is very very nice so be careful what you put in arsenal Brain Freeze is there as a block three, right? Like a lot of these are just block threes. I'm gonna go over these really quickly. Aether Ice Vein, you already know, cards cracked. We have two more in the board for the aggro matchups. I'm not sure if I want to keep running them. They're very good. They're also kind of clunky sometimes. Um, so they're just block threes. They do really good stuff. We already talked about the attacks. Aether Hail's the most efficient card you have to put in your arsenal damage wise. Um, Frosting is blue, block three, Ice Wizard action. That's like not the worst possible thing to put in your arsenal. Uh, I'll pick basically any ice card over it, except Frost Hex <laughs> uh, the majority of the time. But yeah, I'd even like Brain Freeze over this. Amulet of Ice, uh, ice action can be very, very good in the Ice Lander Mirror. Incredible in the Ice Lander Mirror, actually. Uh, same thing with like Guardians, but it does not block. I'm thinking about trimming one. It's been a little awkward for me. Brain Freeze, blue block three. Sometimes the fuse effect is like insane. Um, I really like it against Fi and Briar because you can block with most of your hand and then go to your turn. Brain Freeze, Fuse an Ice card, strip their hand, Arsenal, right? So good. You already know Channel Lake Frigid's insane. We talked about Cold Step and Polar Blast. Um, one thing to mention about Polar Blast, sorry, I'm trying to keep this quick. I have to leave for San Jose for Worlds like in 30 minutes. Um, the one cool thing about Polar Blast is in a lot of matchups, I will actually just not cast it on my opponent's turn. Um, against the Mirror and Guardian specifically, mostly the Mirror, what I really like to do is your opponent will often end their turn with two cards. That way, you can't deal damage to them on their end step, right? They know you want to Waning Moon them, so what they do 
is they have two cards in their hand after they're done attacking or whatever, and they say, I'd like to pass priority. One goes in their arsenal, they drop three more. If you decide to throw spells at them, right, I Polar Blast, I Cycle, I draw my card, and then I Waiting Moon, they're just going to pitch the, the card they have anyway, and I didn't accomplish anything. I just kind of burned a card for no reason. Um, so what I like to do is then I'll go to my turn and I'll cast Polar Blast from my arsenal. Because in this version of Icelander, the target opponent may pay one if they don't your next attack gains dominate is actually a relevant effect because you have these gigantic ass attacks, right? Like nobody wants to get wounded bolt for eight dominate. That's spooky. Um, you can just die from that. So sometimes it gets your opponent to pay. Sometimes it doesn't, but it makes it a little awkward for them. And then one thing you could do, Polar Blast from Arsenal, draw a card, send in an attack, Waiting Moon for two with the remaining mana. Very nice. Love to make that play when I can. Uh, one Heart of Fendal, again, takes advantage of the we're always lower than our opponent stuff. Ice Bolt, Blue Block 3, Ice Card. One of your bigger reach spells uh, at the end of the game, right? You have, like, Ice Bolt, you have Red Aether Ice Vein, and then you have Emeritus Scolding, are, like, the best, like, end game push damage cards. Ice Eternal <laughs> is a card that was absolutely bonkers insane in, like, the Guardian matchup, and is now not anymore it, again it's just too slow like the frost text gameplay just ain't it anymore it can be very good ice eternal was absolutely the nutter butters when people played um frozen heart i believe it's called because they'd activate it and then you respond with ice eternal from arsenal and just shut their turn down right you just like here have five frostbites take a million damage and die now people aren't playing that anymore they're playing tunic which i think is way better against you um ice eternal has lost a lot of points it's really only super great in the icelander mirror um, I'm thinking about trimming one from the list because it's just like a blue block three, which is fine. But I don't know. I think we can do better. Uh, Insidious Chill is an absolutely insane powerhouse card. If <laughs> you have enough life to cast it. If. Because for Insidious Chill to really be good, you need to keep three cards in your hand. You need to keep an Aether Ice Vein. You need to keep a card to pitch. And you need to keep a card to fuse. Uh, if you can't, like Brain Freeze is good with it. But it's not like absolutely insane because you're not also attacking on damage. Um, and sometimes your opponent just pitches the zero and it's like awkward. But, sorry guys, I yawn when I monologue because I forget to breathe. <laughs> um, but if you have a lot of life to work with, Insidious Chill is very good. It is the absolute nuts turn zero play. If you're going first, Insidious Chill is the absolute best thing you can play, bar none. Um, obviously, like, Amulet of Ice into Insidious Chill is the best thing you can play. But, yeah, card is absolutely insane. When you get later in the game, don't get roped into playing it. If you're on like 15 life, you just can't play Insidious Chill because you're going to take too much damage, right? You likely have to give up some damage to play it, and then you're going to have to give up some more damage to keep the cards necessary to activate it. Be very, very careful when you decide to put it in your arsenal because just like Frost Text, it can get trapped. Some games, I've been at 25. I've cast, in, like I put Insidious Chill in my arsenal. My opponent has a big turn, and all of a sudden, I'm stuck. I can cast Insidious Chill if I want to take six more damage, but now I'm getting too low and it just sticks on three for the rest of the game because I have to get it out of my arsenal. I'm never able to trigger it and I lose the game. So be very careful with Insidious Chill. Um, it's not uncommon when you're on the draw, when you're playing second against super aggressive decks like Briar or Fi, uh, to actually board out some numbers of Amulet of Ice and Insidious Chill. I actually recommend that you do, specifically Amulet of Ice. Insidious Chill at least blocks for two. Let's talk a bit about sideboarding. Um, so specifically the Phi matchup I want to talk about first. Things I don't want to see in the Phi matchup. I don't want Emeritus of Scolding. I don't want Frost Hex. I don't want my No Blocks if I can help it. Emeritus of Scolding is there for like the extra reach. Um, and we don't need it in this matchup. What we do need is a way to slow them down. So we bring in our Blizzards, right? Obviously, Blizzard's pretty good against Phi. Sometimes you just get them. This Rounds on Me is also a nice little hedge. I found that it just kind of stems the bleeding. Um, it doesn't like absolutely shut them down but it doesn't like do nothing either. <laughs> it usually like makes them deal about three to four less damage on their turn. Sometimes even more, sometimes even less. You never really know what you're going to get. I do bring in the copies of Aether Ice Vein because I like to have more effects, like more of those take cards from your hand effects in the matchup. Plus it does a lot of damage. Uh, I bring in the Sink Below's because it blocks four, right? It stops Snatch, all that kind of stuff. And then I also bring in Scar for a Scar because what I need to do is just get them low enough. I want to just keep, like I said, that life parity. I'm hoping that something like Blizzard, you know, my sink blows, a uh, channel like Frigid can slow them down enough that I can get them where I need to get them before they're able to put lethal on the board, right? Scar for Scar helps for that immensely. Um, I'm not going to go over every single matchup, but again, like I said, if you're on the draw against Fi or Briar or these super aggressive decks, look to trim some copies of Amulet, maybe even a couple copies of Insidious Chill. Um, <coughs> definitely. 
I wouldn't recommend having Frost Hex in against these guys. It's so brutal. It's so, so, so brutal. Like, it's if you if you have Frost Hex in, that's totally okay. Totally fine. I have been bringing it in uh, against Fi again, even after I started taking it out. I started bringing it back in. Um, I've been bringing it in against Briar. But you have to, if you do that, you have to understand that you are not to cast this card. I would put priority on anything else besides casting Frost Hex. I would... I would rather brain freeze just to look at my opponent's hand than cast Frost Hex. Like, that's how bad this card is in this matchup. Don't, 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 don't cast Frost Hex. If, you, if it's your turn one and your opponent has AB1 and your options are Aether Hail and then Waning Moon or cast Frost Hex, the only reason you better cast Frost Hex is to get it out of your hand. Like, it's that bad, guys. Like, please do not play it in the aggro matchups. Um, some of the other cards in the board... Emeritus Scolding, I think, is really important uh, for this deck. What it does is just grants you that extra little bit of reach, right? Which is really, really nice because it's four from the Arsenal plus three from Waning Moon. Uh, and when you have a Tunic, that only costs you one card to pitch. Just like the highest rate... <coughs> it is the highest rate damage that this deck is able to present. Um, and so we bring it in against matchups where the extra reach is really important and where you kind of have the time. So we bring it in against Guardians. We bring it in against Icelander. Um... We bring it in against Dash. We bring it in against Dorinthia. Speaking of, um, Dorinthia is currently the only deck that I still Frost Hex combo. Every other deck I tempo out. Dorinthia is the only one that I don't. Obviously, full control Dash will, like, you do the same thing. You still Frost Hex combo them, but that deck doesn't see a lot of play. If I see Dash, I expect to get attacked, so I'm not even doing that anymore. I really want to try to stay away from the Frost Hex combo as much as physically possible. Um, Illumin Constellus is the single best card in your entire deck when you are able to run it. And you're only able to run it against other wizards and Viscerai. Viscerai just feeds you points, right? Like, every single time there's a rune chant each turn, you just get to pay it. And what it is, is you pitch one for every, like, for every time you AB on your opponent's turn for the first time, you get to stop one damage and you're adding 1.5 damage for free, right? Because at two ticks, you get a free Waning Moon activation, <coughs> which is worth three damage. So you're just getting like a 2.5 damage swing per game for the first rune chant that you stop. This is why the Viscerai matchup is like so free for us. We get to play Constellus, and then we also have Storm Strategies, which is a nice clean AB2 for the Rosetta Thorn. Just honestly an incredible, incredible card. You ob... Also, obviously, want it in the Wizard Mirror. Very, very good there. I go the full AB5. You don't have to. Um, you could run Coronet's Peak instead in the matchup. I just enjoy having AB5. I don't like to leak damage at all. Really, it's up to you. Um, Crown of Providence is against Guardians. Uh, it's there just so that you could, like, block a Command and Conquer or whatever. Put your Arsenal card back in hand. It fixes it for you. Um, <coughs> I found myself running it a couple other times against decks that I knew were going to be on Command and Conquer. But all in all, Coronet's Peak is just a better card. So I would really only run this against the Guardians. And it's incredible against Bravo. It's slightly less good against Old Him, but like it's still better than Coronet Peak because Coronet Peaking a Guardian is really just not the business. Uh, two copies of Energy Potion have sucked. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> the card's bad. Um, it's very nice in the Icelander Mirror sometimes because it's an item and it puts you ahead on board. You can crack it to, like, pop Frostbites and stuff. You can crack it to get extra AB. You can crack it to get a free Waning Moon activation. The problem comes in, it doesn't block. It doesn't have go again. So when you play Energy Potion, that's the entire turn. And you're thinking, oh, well, if my opponent Wounded Bulls me, I'll just block with three cards and play Energy Potion. And that's a fantastic idea. Except your opponent just Arsenal a blue card, and now you're taking five, right? So it's just like, I don't know. I'm not really impressed with this card. I'm going to start trimming them, I think. Um, we already talked about Frost X <coughs> and how loath I am to play that card. I'm sorry. I just really want to get in your, your head that Frost X sucks. Um, even in the mirror, Frost X sucks. Metacarpus Node. Metacarpus Node is an incredible card. Um, it's obviously really, really good in the Wizard Mirror. You also bring it in against Dromai. Because then you can stop their AB from like burn them all and stuff because you want AB1. You don't want to be forced to pay two in Storm Striders to block uh arcane damage and also it's really nice because sometimes they play thamai and you need your ice bolt to be able to kill it you just activate metacarpus nodes shoot it for four right that extra damage is nice if that never comes up well cool you have an extra one to two points of damage for your finishing turn 
Really like Metacarpus nodes against uh, Dromai. Norrin Hood is specifically just for Wizard. This round's on me, is specifically just for Fi. Although I do bring it in in other matchups. I bring it in against Guardian. I bring it in against um, anything I want to block three, really. Like a blue block three is just really, really good. Um, and unlike Frost Hex, this round's on me is not dead in your arsenal. Sometimes you can do some cool stuff where like uh, your Guardian opponent has already an extra card in hand they want an arsenal cool whatever you cast this round to me they draw an extra one you don't really care you get an extra card to block with it's fine it's like <coughs> it's a blue block three that's not super duper dead whatever you know there are worse things aether ice vein i like in the aggro matchups um because i just want another ice vein i don't bring it against anything that i think will have a 4 so like i'll take it out in the Icelander mirror and stuff like that you can leave it in if you want to it's just really awkward because a lot of times you'd like to block and then uh, pitch attack because attacks are the most important thing in the isolated mirror besides maybe insidious chill nope it's attacks <laughs> attacks are the most th important thing in the isolated mirror um and this can't pitch to play them so i take it out <coughs> don't bring sync below in in the isolated mirror um because it's just awkward you draw it and it's a red and that's weird and then if your opponent doesn't attack you you're forced to arsenal it and if they don't attack you again well, then you can't put anything else in your arsenal, and it's just really awkward. Don't bring it in. Um, Blizzard and Hypothermia are pretty obvious, right? Blizzard against decks that have go again, your Dash, your Viscerai, your Fi, your Dromai, all that stuff. Same thing with this, except I don't actually bring Hypothermia in against Fi. That's where this round's on me comes in. Scar for Scar comes in against everything except Old Him and Icelander. Uh, I take it out for those. It's just very important to, like, keep the damage up, but against Icelander, you can't um control the life totals the same way and against old him if you get ice reacted it's really bad <laughs> you don't want that to happen like if you keep a three card hand right let's say <coughs> you have fendel's fighting spirit scar for scar in a blue and then you scar for scar and they ice react you you're just like you're shit out of luck <laughs> you know what i mean you're you, you're better off just like playing another card blocking with it and then attacking for seven or eight or what have you so yeah i keep scar for scar out uh against old him same thing with icelander you can't you can't control the life total and if they frostbite you it's the same problem as getting ice reacted so that stays out um that's pretty much the deck i'm gonna go like super super quick advice uh it's often more important for you to do damage to your opponent than it is for you to stop damage dealt to you um like i mentioned before you just need to have like you need to try to keep it as close to parity as possible. So if you could deal eight damage on your turn, but you take a little bit extra damage, then it's worth it, right? Like if your turn looks something like, okay, I can I can block out most of the way. I can cast this Aether Hail and then Waning Moon from Arsenal. Um, that's five damage. And I take like, I don't know, let's say zero extra damage, whatever. This is a random example and it probably makes no sense. Or what you could do is you could take four extra damage and you could Wounded Bull them for eight and keep the Aether Hail. Like, that is worth way more to me because, I yeah, I'm taking more damage, um, but it's really important that I put them lower because decks like Fi, decks like Briar, you know, just basically every single deck in the format presents more damage on a turn-by-turn -turn basis than you. So if you try to stop it all, you're eventually just going to fall behind and you're going to die. What you need to do is choose to sacrifice damage when you can to push your own to keep them close enough. That way, when they pull the trigger and they go for it, you can rip Storm Striders and you can kill them in response, right? Or at least you can make them respect it. Uh, and if they have to respect it, then they usually play suboptimally and you can get them on your main phase, set them up for win that way. <coughs> so yeah, that's my advice. I know this is like a super not in-depth um, guide or anything. If you want to see me play the deck, I would recommend you go watch the Goliath Gauntlet matches at 983 Media. Uh, I played with some really, 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 really good players there. Um, and I think you could probably get a pretty good idea of how to play the deck just from there. Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, hopefully, I'll see some of you in San Jose. See you guys next time.